In this video, I'm going to uh, demo some, some basics of Excel that you'll need for our course. Please also note that on Canvas, I've linked to the Microsoft Office website that has, um, they have, have numerous training videos on Excel, so please do refer to those um, to, to get a good foundational knowledge in how to use this program because you will need these skills, um, not only for this course, but, but Excel is, is really something that you'll need in your careers as well. So to get started, um, let's lay out some basic terminology here. So we have rows and we have columns. So right now I'll highlight row two, so this is a row. A row will include one person's data across all of our variables. So I'll talk more about that in a second. But So this is a row. We also have columns, so now I'm highlighting column B. So columns are actually going to be uh, data from our variables. Um, so uh, when I say rows, you know, it's going across. When I say columns, it's this vertical thing here. So most of the time when we analyze data um, as researchers, it will be in a statistical program. So SPSS, R, SAS, depending on what your individual preference is. For this class, we're just doing really simple basic statistics. So we'll do standard deviations, we'll do means, those kinds of things. and Excel can handle those, so there's no reason to go out and, and spend money on something like SPSS right now. Um, you'll, you'll get training in SPSS in, when you take uh, statistics. So for now, we'll learn how to use Excel. So we need to start with, you know, how do we set up our data? So again, every column will be a different variable. So say, um, well actually, let's start off column A, I want ID. So this is an ID number. So this is something, um, it's just a number that you give everyone because you don't identify people by name, right? So here my first participant, maybe that's, um, you know, I don't know, Tony Soprano is person number one. But I don't put his name here, right? I just, I give him a unique identifier. So I put number one. And then we'll have person two, um, I don't know, maybe that's, uh, Homer Simpson and then I go down to three when that's I don't know maybe Marge participated as well so we just go down the line and all the names are replaced with numbers to ensure anonymity so first of all uh, one really fantastic uh, function in Excel um, is that we can make it continue this numbering so that I don't have to go down and do you know four five six seven eight I don't have to do all of that so to do that highlight your number sequence so here I have one two three and then you'll see this little box at the lower right and when I hover over it it turns my cursor into a cross I'm gonna left click that hold it down and pull and it will number all the way down so now I've automatically got um, this numbering all the way down to 20 so this is really um, really useful. Another thing that you can do in Excel, so since I have these numbers highlighted, I'm just going to right click and copy. And say I don't want them, um, you know, going vertically from 1 to 20. Say I want to number it, you know, horizontally 1 to 20. So here I'm just going to click in cell D2, so that's column D, row 2, right click, and I have all of these different paste options, right? So I can actually transpose these and change it from a vertical list to a horizontal list. So that's another really um, good function of Excel to, to keep in mind, which we don't need to do right now. I just wanted to show you that, that this is an option. So here um, we have our ID variable going down um, column A. Going across, we would have person one's data, person two's data, three, so on and so forth. So maybe the first um, variable that we collected information on is something like uh, life satisfaction. So you can call it whatever you want. So I'm just going to put life satisfaction there. Maybe we also put uh, collected data on career satisfaction. So now I've set it up for two variables across 20 people. And then I can just uh, just type in you know whatever their responses from the survey was which I'll just make this up say it was on a scale of 1 to 7 so this person 7 4 3 2 1 you know just uh, give some random numbers here and then I'll do the same thing here just to give us some data to play around with as we're doing this 
Okay, so now we have data for 20 people on two different variables. Um, so now I can start showing you how to work some formulas. But first, let me tell you, um, so right now we can't see our entire life satisfaction label. So what we can actually do is hover in between columns C and D, and we get this little, um, I don't know, this little icon here. And we can click, and we can actually make this bigger so that we can read the entire name of that column. So one thing you'll want to do um, anytime you're entering data, which we won't have to do because this is an online course, so it's going to be automatically entered for us, but we'll want to set up um, the boundaries. So the scale was on from 1 to 7. What if you end up with an 8? Well, that gives you a good indication that someone entered data wrong. So let's do some, some simple things like that. So one thing we could have is n, so the number of people that participated uh, that answered questions for that variable. Um, we can get the maximum score reported. We can get the minimum to make sure that it falls in. Um, some other important things we might want to know. Um, helps if I spell minimum right, right? So we might be interested in um, the mean here, so some central tendency kinds of things, mean, median, mode, uh, maybe we want the standard deviation to give us a sense of the variance there, um, and then maybe we want a correlation. So the good news is, and again I'm going to resize this, we can do all of this really quickly with formulas in Excel. So anytime you're doing a formula, the first thing you want to type is an equal sign. So that tells Excel that you are about to do um, a formula of some type. So here, all we want to know is how many people answered the life satisfaction question. So this is a simple count. So if you do equals count, open parentheses, and we can do this in a couple of different ways. Um, we could say we want uh, starting at cell B2 through cell uh, B21. And so that will highlight and show us that. And then we can hit enter. And that tells us 20 people, in fact, answered that question. Another way to do it, so again, equals count, open parentheses, we can just click right here. So we want to start here and then drag it down. And it does the same thing, but it's a little bit easier. So now we want to do the maximum. So what is the maximum number that someone reported? So again, you're going to start with the equal sign, max, open parentheses, and then I'm just going to highlight all of this because I think that's the easiest. We can do minimum, and that's exactly what you're probably guessing, equals min, open parentheses, and then drag it down and hit enter. The mean, this is actually really easy too. Um, so the mean is the same thing as an average. So you can actually do equals average, click on that, and then drag it down, hit enter, and now you have the mean for that. The median equals the median. You can click here, drag and drop, hit enter. Mode, same thing, equals the mode. all the way down and hit enter. Standard deviation. So there are a couple of different ones that you can choose. Um, we'll just do standard deviation based on the entire population all the way down and that gives you the standard deviation. For correlation it's equals corel. So you can get the correlation um, between two sets of data which uh, it doesn't really make sense to do this right now, um, but say we wanted to know the correlation between life satisfaction, so here's all of these scores, comma, career satisfaction. I don't know why that pulled up, comma, career satisfaction. So we're going to see what the relationship is between life satisfaction and career satisfaction, and hit enter. So one thing that's come up is um, these are not all formatted the same way, right? So we have uh, a bunch of decimal places here, but none here. So what we'll do 
typically, um, so there are no decimal points for minimum, maximum, so mean, median, mode, those things could potentially have decimals. So if we highlight those, right click, actually I'm going to go over for the next column too, right click, format cells, we can set rules for how these are set up. So I'm going to go down to custom, I'm going to delete this general, and I'm going to do decimal place zero, 00. So that tells me to always have two decimal places, and it formats it automatically, so you don't have to worry about that. So let's see, now we need to do this all for career satisfaction, right? Well, here's another really excellent tool in Excel, so I can highlight all of our formula here, and then you see this little um, little box here again. If you highlight that and drag it over, it will copy over your formula. So here we had, if you look up here, um, we wanted to count B2 through B21. If we look here, now the formula is the count from C2 to C21. And it should have changed all of this. So the maximum C2 to C21, minimum, the median, all of those kinds of things. And of course the correlation won't work because um, you can only do that once for two variables, right? So it's really easy to carry that across um, the different variables. So we have some, some really great statistics here. Um, some easier things if you're interested, and again, you know, these are pretty simple, so you probably don't need them for purposes of our course, but you could do a sum. So if you wanted to do an overall satisfaction variable that consisted of life satisfaction plus career satisfaction, we'll just do, we'll call this variable overall satisfaction. And we can do the same thing we did before. So equals, and this will be a sum of this one, and then comma, this one, hit enter. And again, just click on this, click on the box, and pull it down through your 20 people. And now you have an overall satisfaction score. Um, you could do, um, you can subtract as well, you can divide, you can multiply, you can do any mathematical uh, function that you would like to do, but again, probably won't need most of those. Um, so let's see. We've talked about the variable setup, the participant setup, we've entered in some data, we've calculated the basic statistics for it. Um, maybe the, the last thing that you'll be interested in, so right now you'll notice that this is not in APA format. If for some reason you wanted it in APA, you can select your entire workbook here, change this to Times New Roman, uh, wherever that is, here it is, and then 12 point font so that you can go ahead and get that into APA format. Um, you can also, just like in Word, you can bold, italicize, underline, all of those kinds of things. You can highlight cells if you want to help, you know, these stick out. And then these are statistics, so they should be a little bit different too. You can do all sorts of highlighting. Um, there's also a function where you can do conditional highlighting. So here, um, let's just highlight the people who are particularly satisfied. So maybe we say um, overall satisfaction above, uh, say, a 10. We, wanna, we want those people to jump out at us. So we can highlight this column, go to conditional formatting, highlight cells rules. If it's greater than, um, here it set it to 8, but we'll change it to 10. And then it'll fill those, a light red fill with dark red text. Click OK. And now you can see those people that are particularly high on this overall satisfaction variable have been highlighted for us. Um, so this could be useful if you were doing some kind of depression inventory and you wanted to be able to quickly identify people who are um, at the really high end, so maybe they're in a little bit of danger of, of harming themselves or potentially others, and so um, you need to flag this for some kind of follow-up, you need to contact the IRB, whatever you need to do about it. Um, that's a good way to, um, to bring attention to that quickly. So those are some of the basics that you will definitely need for this course. Again, like I said, I've linked to the Microsoft Office website. Take a look at that, see what functions you're interested in. 
Um, I guarantee you Excel is something that you will use across all of your classes, no matter what your career is. Um, you're going to have to look at Excel at some point. So having a basic knowledge of this is, is really imperative in, in today's workforce. Um, so take a look, play around with it a little bit, um, play around with you know calculating the different statistics, but definitely make sure that you have an understanding of how to input formulas, how to input data, how to set up the data set and those kinds of things because um, that will be a component of your, um, your, your term paper this semester.